one, when you make a property insurance claim, you're stepping into a minefield. And by that, I mean anywhere you step, you can get blown up. And by getting blown up, I don't mean taking a haircut. I mean getting killed. So let's give some examples. Uh, you make a claim and um, you think everything's fine. You're working with the insurance company. They're sending their people out. You're sending your people out. It goes on for six months. You're not even close to figuring out what happened. It just keeps on going. And then a little bit after six months, the insurance company says, well, you didn't submit a proof of loss. And you're like, well, okay, we'll submit one now. And you say, well, you had a 180-day deadline, and, and we're, we're past that. There's really not a lot we can do right now. And you're like, well, that doesn't seem right. I'm going to check into that. So check into it, and quite frankly, they're right. You had 180 days, and you missed it. There are lots of things you could have done. If you would have requested the, an extension on, on that 180 days, and you would have requested it from the whole tower of property insurers all the way up and down the line, they probably would have given it to you. If they wouldn't have given it to you, you would have had grounds to say that they were doing things improperly. Companies, sophisticated entities, do miss these deadlines. And it's much more than just this 180, 180 day um, proof of loss deadline. And by the way, that might be 90 days, it might be some other number. But there's a whole series of deadlines that come within, immediately come upon you when you enter into these, the claims process for property policies. And the terminology is sometimes so foreign and the jargon is so extreme that most business folks don't know where to start. And I can understand that because the jargon is ridiculous. You will get terms thrown around that you've never heard before. You will get accountants telling you one thing and you'll get claims folks from the insurance company telling you the exact same thing with such certainty that you may actually believe that they're true. But, but, but be careful. There is truth and the truth comes from the law and from the policy. So another, another example of a, the minefield, um, and this one is one that's, that's uh, blown up on a number of folks, and it's published decisions and, you know, in New York and, and elsewhere, and it, it's, it's really problematic. And that is, some po most policies have a limitation on filing suit, uh, two years. Now, look, I'm not saying you want to file suit or don't want to file suit, but the fact of the matter is for a complex claim, it can take you two years to figure it out. Um, the insurance company may say they're in the process of paying. You don't want to file suit. So what do you do? Well, you look, if you're aware of this two years, you, um, you ask for an extension and you document it properly under the policy. But if you're not aware of it, the two years passes. And there's been case after case where courts have looked at this and said, we're sorry, you missed the deadline. You can't file suit anymore. And you say, well, well, that's okay. They still got an obligation. I don't have to sue them. They're going to pay anyways. And that's what I would generally think. But the bottom line is they won't pay because they don't have to because you can't sue them. It seems like they shouldn't take that position, but that's a position that will be taken and has been taken in the past. And there's a whole series of cases upholding it. So point number one, when you make a property insurance claim, you're stepping into a minefield calendar the deadlines. Make sure you understand the coverage grants. Make sure you understand what's covered and what's not covered. Make sure you understand how all the deductibles apply and use that to, to, to calendar out and to figure out what minefield you're entering into.